I work for Agility Logistics, so we specialize in logistics for the chemical industry. Uh, I've been with Agility for 17 years now, uh, scarily, and my role is Procurement Director for Europe. So within my remit is container shipping, European land, um, and ice tanks. Welcome to, to Victoria Buse, who joined me today for the um, chat around the theme uh, Women Leadership uh, Beyond the U New Normal. So, Vicky, a pleasure to have you here with Thank us you, uh, today. Twenty twenty is not a year I would like to repeat, if I'm honest. It was definitely it, it's the hardest year of my career so far. Um, for several reasons. I mean, obviously, when, when we went into lockdown in the UK, um, then obviously all the, the schools closed. Uh, and because of the industry that we were in, it was a very turbulent time for professionally as well as personally. Um, so I had my children at home with me. But as my husband has a very stereotypical uh, male job he works in construction so he continued mm. to go out to work every day so I was at home with two young children um, and working full time um, so that was extremely stressful um, and as much as you can try to manage your day differently obviously children don't understand that you just have to uh, be on a telephone call for half an hour or you know if, if they they need the toilet they need the toilet <laughs> if they need some food yeah. they need some food you know um so it was it was very very difficult um and it, as I've mentioned it was something that I, I definitely wouldn't want to repeat and this year has been difficult but in a slightly different way because when we had the second wave it felt like all of the adrenaline that people have been running on over the last year had gone uh, so we were very depleted and yet we were asked to pick ourselves up and do the same thing again because the schools closed again you're asked to mm. do the same thing um and the industry is still obviously very very volatile so it's it's a different challenge um now and then being in a leadership leadership position you obviously need to um, try and keep the show on the road with the rest of your team. So you need to try and manage other people's personal issues as best as, as you can, um, but whilst keeping, obviously, the business moving forward. Yeah. I mean, I've noticed that, again, through COVID over the last 12 months, you know, people have reacted very differently and they've come under different pressures because of COVID. Um, and so people's behaviours and how they've reacted to that have been very, very different. And it's managing all of those different reactions um, that is vital to be able to keep it going uh, and to keep the company moving forward you know as well as the more traditional um, viewpoints you know I think you need vision um, I think you need a certain amount of assertiveness um, but that is probably something that has become more apparent to me in, in recent times. that everybody agrees it needs to happen but they put the emphasis on whether it's well it's the shipper's responsibility or it's the shipping line's responsibility it's the government's responsibility but it's everybody's responsibility and I think people need to accept that if we really are going to be successful in this and we're going to hit these goals then and you want to stay competitive within the industry then it may hit your bottom line so it may be an investment um, and it, you may need to take some of your profits and you may need to invest that into the environment and into the future and into sustainability because it does it does cost. And, and that's what we've seen over COVID as well, is that unfortunately, some really good initiatives have stopped because they cost money. Um, and it's very disappointing to see. And there's some really big challenges to go carbon neutral by 2050. And, you know, within agility, we have some very... Um, aggressive targets to try and meet as well but it, it, it will come on monetary value 
And so you need the buy-in of shareholders, you know, as well as management and as well as, as government to be able to really be successful, I think. Going a bit back in, in time, uh, through your journey, uh, career journey, uh, um, I mean, was it already your dream job when you were in school to work in, in that industry or what were your original <laughs> uh, To give you the answer, no, my, my degree was um, actually public service, so um, probably influenced by my mum who was a nurse, I always wanted to work for the National Health Service in the UK, so that's what my degree specialised in. Um, but what I found when I left uni, it was it was very hard to penetrate. They do a lot of internal um, interviews and promotions. So I have to be honest, I fell into logistics and chemical logistics. Um, and agility was the first role that I'd had within the industry. The person, our CEO now um, is a lady called Liz Preston. And she actually interviewed me um, for, for my initial role within agility. And she very much impressed me and she asked me the question of what I'd like to do in five years. Um, and I told her I wanted her job, which I was lucky <laughs> enough to have, actually, as it turns out. But she's very much someone throughout my career who I've looked to and I've definitely taken inspiration from. She's been an influence in, in a work and aspect. The petrochemical industry doesn't appear on young people's radar when they're straight out of uni or when they're coming into the workplace. Then it's very much about reaching out to them. Um, I think things like, you know, development programs, fast track programs from university, because I know when I left, as I mentioned, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I obviously I wanted a, a career as such. So young people. They still, even if they aren't sure which direction they want to go to, they do need to know still and have comfort that they are on a path and they are supported on that path. So I think even at a junior level, um, if, you know, if talent is recognised, then it's important to, to nurture that talent and to show people that they do have a path. We've just started a, a leadership programme within Agility that's probably very much long overdue. But part of the reason to implement that is to you know, to, to invest in people as well, which I think is important, but it's reaching out to universities, I think, and also use of things like apprenticeships or the equivalent in other countries, obviously. It, depending on the role, you know, a, a good leader may not necessarily be the most academic. And um, so things like apprenticeships, I think, are also very important to make sure you capture the whole of the market as well. The, the, the industry can be traditionally quite slow paced, I think, in terms of change. So how much is the industry at the forefront of social media, for example, because that's how young people obviously now apply for jobs. They, they view the world. They get their news. Um, so I think social media has a, has a big part to play in that. Um, and it can't just be lip service. There's no point, I think, in just saying, well, look at these statistics and because you can make statistics and young people aren't stupid, you know, you can make statistics um, be in your favour, whatever that viewpoint may be. So I think it is um, a real commitment and an engagement with local communities as well. So people can really see for themselves the difference that the companies are making. I don't see a difference of having necessarily to manage men or women. What I have noticed about leadership is that you have to take everybody on their own needs and their own strengths and weaknesses, whether or not they are a man or a woman. It became very clear when I had children that if I did want to co continue on that career path, um, that if I was part time or stuck, took a step back, to you know to to focus on family for a few years that that would have curtailed my career so I've had to continue to work full-time in order to continue on that path so it's not just how it affects me and my opportunity obviously how, how that impacts the rest of my family so I did we did obviously have to sit down and, and make that decision together so I've been very lucky in that aspect that I have that support um at home too and also something that I did come across, I did a personality questionnaire, again, when I was returning from maternity. 
and it picked up that I was suffering from confidence at that time. And what I was told was about some studies that have shown that if a woman looks at a job description, if she can't, if she doesn't think that she can fulfill every item on the job description, she wouldn't apply for that job. Whereas if a man looks at the same job description and thinks he can do 50% of the items on the job description, he would apply. So I think um, that assertiveness is, is possibly what, or lack of assertiveness possibly, which may be a female trait. Obviously there will be exceptions to the rule, but I think that is what's held women back possibly um, just because that may be personality trait. And I've noticed that as well in friends as well. You mentioned friends and family, and that's what I've noticed. If we do see this lack of confidence, especially if, if a woman does return from, from maternity leave and she's been out of business for a long time, then I think there's definitely a need for some coaching to, to get them obviously back into up to speed. I mean, especially within logistics, which is so fast paced and obviously it's it's ever changing. So you, you take a year or two out and the whole world can have changed in that time. So I definitely think there's a need for coaching for women uh, if they've been out of the business. But I do worry sometimes that specific gender training can almost reiterate the problem. Um, yeah. Because for me, it's about the right person for the job and not the right gender for the job. Yeah. Um, so you can almost end up with a quota. We must have so many women in, in leadership positions. Well, yes, I agree that we should have more women. But if they are the right person for the job, not just because you have to fill a quota. So I don't know if I necessarily support the idea of specific gender training. So 17 years clearly is, is quite some time. So what, what has been your uh, motivation, reason for staying that long? Because the company must have done something right. Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't uh, be there so long. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's first, it sounds a bit cheesy, but first and foremost, it's been the people. I mean, I've worked with some great people over the last 17 years. Um, as I mentioned, it, it wasn't a particular desire to, to be in the, the business, but the people and the fact that it's so, it is so fast moving. So it doesn't necessarily feel like I've been, I've obviously had a lot of different roles within them 17 years. So it's been evolving. So it's continuously evolved. That's what I've liked. And I've been part of that change. Um, and just like container shipping as well, it's it's ever changing. So you don't feel like it's static. If you look at your leadership uh, role, I mean, what are the, the aspects or experience you have made which you cannot find in any, you know, college uh, uh, course or, or book? Mm -hmm. um, what are the things you, you would describe you? Um, Oh, it was it was it's a bigger part of the job than I ever anticipated. You know, being a, a leader of people is it's a huge part of your job and a very, very important part of the job as well to be successful. But to think that you could do an annual review with someone and then a half yearly review and then you put that to bed uh, definitely isn't the case. You know, to be successful, you need to bring people along with you. So you have to make the time for other people. And that obviously puts a pressure on your job because you still have a role, but I think it's it's vitally important to make that time um, if you are going to be successful. But it's also getting a balance then between not carrying that with you too much because you can take other people's problems on as well. So it's that balance between supporting other people, but it not becoming your mental health issue or you know your stress uh, is a difficult one. And that's one that really, I think only experience can, can I give you rather than a course or a qualification? To, to end this, I, I would actually like to, to give you the opportunity uh, for youngsters, uh, maybe your ad, your career advice. If you have, I don't know, your top three or, you know, uh, top list of career advices uh, you would give to, to a youngster currently thinking, okay, uh, what the hell am I going to do in future? Uh, is there anything you can share out of your secret box, uh, Vicky? <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, um, do what makes you happy. That's what I'll be telling my children. Do what makes you happy because in the long run, you know, you can you can chase 
money and you can chase, you know, monetary benefits, but it won't necessarily make you happy. And once you do have children and you're thinking of the future, then you will reassess, but follow your heart, definitely. Mm-hmm.